What's up guys? This is Chris with Serving and Swerving. And if you follow the channel, you know I like to just, to just go out and do different things. So today we're checking out the St. Louis Blues Museum. A really cool spot if you like history, if you like music, if you like learning about the past. It really talks about how some of the musicians started out down south, then they went up north to St. Louis, Chicago, all these different areas. It gives you a feel for the people, the climate, the culture. The St. Louis Blues Museum is definitely something worth checking out. I feel like this is my first time visiting it. You know, and I've been here my almost my whole life. So if you haven't checked it out, I would recommend it. And then after that, stop by Sugar Fire and get some really good barbecue. But guys, if you haven't been to the museum, check this out. It's about 10 minutes long. I'm going to kind of take you on a tour through the St. Louis Blues Museum. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for other things to do in St. Louis. I do the hikes, the restaurants, talk to the people on the street. I like to explore and get to know the cities that I stay in. Thanks. All right, well, let's get started. So first off, it's, I keep saying the St. Louis Blues Museum. I mean the National Blues Museum. I'm just so used to saying the St. Louis Blues because of the hockey team. So the National Blues Museum. So people come from all over the world if they're big blues fans or if they're just in St. Louis and they like music, come check it out. This spot is awesome. So the gift shop was actually closed, and uh, I guess I was actually trespassing. I didn't know they were closed. But yeah, they have all kinds of statues, cool things to buy. And on here, I'd say just go to the Blues Museum and see what kind of music they have going on. Everybody likes live music. Everybody likes different things to do in St. Louis. This place actually holds a lot of different uh, events, and they perform at a lot of different spots. And it's a Grammy affiliate. So they have all kinds of awesome world-renowned musicians and they'll actually like uh do like block parties and different things so follow their facebook to pay attention to what they got going on but into the history of the museum these right here were the authentic banjos the first ones it's called a Nagoni instrument and it's from west africa so it kind of talks about how they started music in west africa then they brought it down south and then from the south they go up north and it talks about how the blues kind of influence all kinds of American pop music. Chuck Berry, how he kind of started rock and roll. And then it talks about how the blues kind of turned into R&B and soul. It talks about how it all got started. After you learn how to use those instruments, let's take you back to how people discovered the blues. They actually had like traveling tents and traveling troops of musicians, of actors, of dancers who would come around just like they'd come to like a town and they'd sell medicine. That you know they had fairgrounds where they actually had medicine shows. They actually had dancers. They had theaters. This really got the whole audience involved. And bring it with you when you come. That's because a lot of these people that were doing the blues, they're from down south, the rural south. They left fleeing racism, fleeing poverty, looking for better jobs. They left the south and they went up north. Here's the three blind men. They had a lot of blind uh, blues players. You know, this is a real thing. 
then it also talks about women in blues music because women had a very important role too you can't uh you know take away from everybody's contribution grand opera and parlor junk i'll tell you the world is bunk that's the kind of stuff i shun let's get dirty and have some fun ma rainey's like one of those characters you would read about in the books or watch during a periodical she was a rough and tough gal who was traveling around she had her own band she was really putting everything on her back whenever being a woman and especially being a black woman must have been really hard but she stood up to that she had an attitude with it she did her thing and she proved to be a big spotlight for blues music um so it's going to pay attention to her and then it's going to talk about how like st louis blues so the st louis blues the name was the first big blues name for a song the St. Louis Blues. Then they ended up doing like the Chicago Blues, the Texas Blues. They did a little bit of everything. But the St. Louis Blues was the first main hit record that was technically blues music. And that was played by John Candy, who was actually from St. Louis. And uh, he was also, he played all kinds of music. And to trick the audiences into listening to blues music, they uh, had a tango and they slowed down the tango to blues music and they kind of infused it and they got the people going. I thought this display was cool. It's 900 harmonicas. This is all by one guy in his lifetime. He used all of these. Talk about iconic. This guy was no joke. The blues hit the road big time. So they went up to St. Louis and they went up to Chicago. And Chicago had one of the best theaters in the world. So blues was getting a little bit bigger in America. But now that it's in Chicago, it's in the big city lights and people are coming from all over and they're listening to this soulful music. They're welcoming in these blues players into their home. And, uh, you know, this really changed the feel for people and helped out with civil rights and helped out with all kinds of things because you can't hate somebody who you love. Impossible. It talks about the characters like Lead Belly, who had a belly full of lead. You know, his actual name was like Lead Fellow or Lead Wood or something like that. But they called him Lead Belly because he was shot so many times. And he's, you know, these people who sang the blues, they were tough guys. They'd been through it all. This guy, Lead Belly, was actually on serious prison sentences. Who knows for what? And he got out of it two times, both by singing. The people, the jailers were so, you know, kind of obsessed with his singing. And they loved it so much that they freed him on parole. And he became a famous musician. Uh-oh, Chuck Berry, Johnny Be Good. You can't be in St. Louis without giving a tip of the nod to Chuck Berry, okay? The original rock and roll man himself. A great guy, and this, he took the blues music, he added a little bit more of a flair to it, and people say it's the beginning of rock and roll. So now we're starting to change genres a little bit, and blues is right there at the base of it. Well, you guys kind of get the gist. A real cool spot. It shows how blues music influenced the culture. It also showed like how the jukebox and the TVs really made it mainstream because then they could actually hear it. it talks about how the people from the south kind of moved up north and they brought their music with them. Uh, it talks about how it influences today. You'll see like Kendrick Lamar right here, who always samples blues music. 
because listen, there's all this pretty music, there's all this other stuff. It even talks about how like Waylon Jennings and like the outlaw blues, I mean the outlaw country came from blues. Cause look, all this fun pop stuff is cool, but here the majority of us, we're struggling, we're hurt, we're working people, okay? And the blues speaks to that. All of this other happy stuff that you hear by these millionaires, I don't wanna hear it. I wanna hear outlaw country, or I wanna hear blues music talking about how we don't have enough money, how we have to work and how our mom is sick. You know, let's get some truth out there. This life is hard. Let's at least experience the hardships together. Let's explore the hardships together. I don't want to hear all that little poppy, happy, stupid stuff. I want to listen to Outlaw Country with real people, real problems. And you know, hey, I don't know. I, <laughs> whatever. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the TikTok serving and swerving. I travel the country serving and bartending at the best spots. Checking it out. Doing the things. All right.